Okay, so today we're going to show you how to make a skirt for Trek. Uh, it's pretty simple to do, but first thing you need to do is take your measurement so you know how much fabric to buy. So we're just going to measure from like your natural waist, which is kind of where you put your hands on your hips, um, if you're going to do that. So we'll measure from there to mid-calf. Your skirt has to reach at least mid-calf or longer in order to be kind of meet the guidelines for Trek. So we're going to go from here to about here. Um, so we've got 31 inches there and then you want to add three extra inches onto that in order to give you enough fabric to make a hem and to make a waistband as well. So that's 34 inches and then you're going to want two widths of fabric of that. So you're going to want uh, with that 68 inches in length when you're actually purchasing your fabric at the store. Now I always add a couple of extra inches so that you have some to make a waistband or if you uh, kind of mess something up. So I think we're going to get about 72 inches of fabric and that will give us plenty to make a waistband or to make a casing at the top um, if you want to do uh, an elastic waistband. So we're going to go to the store and grab some fabric now. So if you go to Joann's, there's usually a section called Homespun Fabrics, and this is gonna be your more authentic fabrics. It's 100% cotton, and they are, it's a woven fabric, so it's the same on both sides like this. So this is, these are gonna be kind of your more authentic fabrics to look at. Um, you can always find a coupon or wait till they go on sale or something like that, but this is kind of what you're gonna, you're kind of wanting to go for. Um, you don't really want any novelty prints like this, like Route 66 signs, probably not Pioneer Authentic. But then they also have a whole section of, um, like they have lots of different colors and things like that. You're just going to want to look for something that's 100% cotton. That's kind of your main uh, goal here. So there's obviously a lot of different things you could choose as far as fabrics go, but you kind of want something that... Um, isn't too dark uh, for like a bonnet. You don't want to be wearing like a black bonnet. It's going to be really hot. Um, like I said, you want something 100% cotton because it's just going to be safer around the campfires and things like that. Um, there's lots of options and then there's also solid fabrics that you can use to kind of coordinate if you want to make an apron out of a solid fabric that goes with the print that you picked or something like that. It's a good option too. But yeah, there's lots of things you can choose from at most stores. You don't want something like this. You don't want something that is um, flannel or too hot. You don't want a fleece skirt, obviously. Um, but yeah, there's lots of things like this blue is really nice or, you know, something that looks authentic, not anything like too out there. These are the fabrics we ended up picking out. This will be the skirt, and this is a homespun um, yarn woven fabric. So it's kind of the same on both sides, you can see. Thanks for a nice skirt. And then we got this purple to make an apron out of that kind of coordinates. So we got, we ended up getting two yards of the skirt fabric and one yard of the apron fabric, and that should give us plenty to make both. So I hope this will kind of help you visualize what I mean when I say you need two widths of fabric. So you want a skirt that's going to be full enough that you can uh, pull a hand cart in it. So you need something that's full enough that you can run in it if you need to. Uh, and so what we've done is I have my two, I have the 34 inch length, which goes from here to there. And then the width of the fabric is a 44 inch width. So when you unfold it, it's nice and full like that. So what we're gonna do is we're just going to sew these two pieces together uh, into a big tube. So it's gonna go selvage edge to selvage edge all the way around. And so you'll have one big tube of the fabric. If you're making a skirt with a waistband, you want to leave an opening on one of your side seams so that you can step in and out of your skirt more easily. So you're just going to leave probably the last five or six inches unsewn, fold back the fabric, sew along here, 
across the bottom and up the other side where I haven't pinned yet. And this will allow you to attach the waistband to the top and then your buttons will sit on one side and your buttonholes will sit on the other. And this is how you'll get in and out of your skirt. If you're going to make a skirt with an elastic waistband, then all you're gonna want to do is sew up both sides all the way. So you're gonna sew all the way up this way. And then you'll take the top of your fabric, turn it down about a quarter of an inch, and then fold it over again, and you'll sew a casing. Now this is just gonna depend on the size of elastic that you get. I would probably get a one inch elastic to do a waistband like this. So you're gonna wanna make sure that you make a casing that's big enough to fit your elastic once it's sewn shut. So again, this is if you're going to be making an elastic waistband skirt, you'll just tuck it under a quarter of an inch, tuck it like this, sew along this edge, and that will give you a casing where you can string your elastic. So now you can see that we have a nice big tube of fabric like this that will kind of end up being our skirt. So what you want to do now is put a basting stitch about a quarter to half of an inch from the top of your fabric and we're going to use that to gather the fabric in and make it fit your waistband. So that's our next step. We're going to do that. And then usually before I do this, I like to either take some pins or some chalk and mark um, halfway through each side. So you want to make sure that the gathers are equally distributed around your waistband. So the side seams will be really easy to determine because that's where you sewed your fabric together. But I usually like to make a mark in the middle of each of the skirt panels so that I can attach that to the waistband in the right spot so that the gathers are equal around. So our next step is to actually create the waistband. Now we bought 72 inches of fabric and we used 34 inches for each of our skirt panels, which left us with just a few inches at the very end, which is perfect. So this piece of fabric is four and a half inches wide and we're going to take our waist measurement and add two inches, and that's how long we're going to make our waistband. So for example, if your waist measurement is 30 inches, you're going to take 30 inches, add two, and this is where we're going to cut our waistband. The next step is to take your waistband, fold it in half, and press it with an iron so that it stays nice and flat while you're pinning. Now I've measured a quarter of the length with chalk and these chalk lines will match up with the side seams and the chalk lines in the middle of each of our skirt panels like I talked about earlier. So we'll pin those places first around our skirt and then we'll pull the basting thread so that the gathers scrunch up to fit in each section of our waistband. So now I have the waistband pinned to the skirt and you'll see here's the waistband right there. And then I just pinned the right side of the skirt to the right side of the waistband. Um, and then you pull one of the strings on your basting stitch. You use that to pull, see how long it is now. You pull that and that creates your gathers, and then you sort of fit it, fit the skirt to the waistband. So you pull the string and gather it up until it's the same length as your waistband, and then you just pin it, and we'll sew kind of right along the line where the basting stitch is. We'll just sew it right to the waistband, and then we'll be on our way to having a finished skirt. So this is what the waistband's gonna look like when you're finished sewing it together. So you can see the gathers there. And then on the back or on the side, you can choose where you wanna wear it, but you'll see this is the opening where we sew down. 
and then I usually leave, this is why I add a couple of inches onto the waistband so that you kind of have this tab where you can place the buttons on this side and then you sew the bu buttonhole here and then you can close up your skirt like that and it should overlap just a little bit um, right here so that it kind of closes that hole while you're wearing it. So here we go. So our next step will be to just pin the hem, which will just be a couple of inches um, and we'll get that sewn. You can sew the hem by hand or you can sew it on your sewing machine if you have a hem foot and a sewing machine that does a hemming stitch. I would definitely recommend practicing it on a spare scrap of fabric first just so that you get it right before you actually start sewing all the way around. So I'm going to iron the hem into this skirt and then I'll get it pinned and hemmed. So here we have the finished product. So you can see the waistband is attached and we put the hem in at the bottom here. And so you can see in the back how I kind of finished. I put two buttonholes here so that you can put two buttons on the waistband and it just makes it a little bit more secure. You can put one if you want. You can do it kind of however you would like in the back there, but then it kind of overlaps so that this uh, opening is nice and closed, concealed. And here we have it, a trek dress. So now we're gonna move on to the apron portion. And I bought one yard of fabric to make this apron with. So I've unfolded it on my table so I can kind of see how much I have to work with. And we're gonna make the apron 25 inches long. And then we're just gonna do the width based on how much fabric we need for the other parts of the apron. So I'm actually going to measure the 25 inches from this edge to it ends up being somewhere about here. And I should have about nine inches left on that side of my fabric. And then I'm going to take a square, a nine by nine square from that side and make it into the pocket. And then I'm going to take two long strips on this side of the fabric, and this will make our waistband and the ties. So I'm gonna, I want to leave enough on this edge of the fabric so that I can have two four and a half inch wide strips of fabric. And that will be plenty to make a waistband and ties. So we're gonna go nine inches in from the edge, cut here to 25 inches, and then we'll cut across here. And that big pour, that big square will be the apron front We'll have two strips along this side, which will make Mom. the waistband and the straps. And then we'll have some extra Mom. over here that we can use Mom. to make um, pockets out of. Mom. So you can see the pieces as I've cut them out here. So these two are gonna be your waistband and the ties. This will end up being your pocket. And then I'm gonna hem these three sides of the apron and gather the top. And then we'll work on getting it attached to the waistband. So here is the apron skirt and I've hemmed it on the sides. You can see I just turned it under twice and then just sewed all the way around, except for at the top, which is where we're going to um, gather it. So I have, this is a 15 inch by four and a half inch piece that I've just ironed in half. And this is what we're going to gather the skirt and tie it to. Now the 15 inches is half of the waist measurement and that will be the front of your apron. So we're gonna gather the apron skirt, pin it to this, and then we'll take our longer uh, waistband and tie pieces and we'll sew them to this edge and create the, the ties later. So here we have the skirt pinned to the waistband and you'll see how I have the small piece that's the front part of the waistband 
sewn to our longer tie pieces and we're gonna finish these later. But for right now, we're just going to sew the skirt of the apron to the inside of the waistband. Now, we're not sewing it to both parts of the waistband right now because what we're going, going to do is once this is sewn, we will fold this over and then we'll fold it over the tucks and that way you can kind of hide the seam there and it will look a little bit nicer. We'll have to sew that by hand, but it won't take very long. So I'll go ahead and sew this now. So we've sewn the skirt to the waistband and then I took the ties for the waistband and I put them right sides together, pinned it, and then we're gonna sew from as close to the middle waistband as we can all the way to the ends and then we're gonna sew the end closed here too and that will make our tie and then all you'll have to do is pull it inside out like we've done over here and you can see it makes a nice smooth tie that meets right up with the skirt of your apron and the other waistband and then from here like I said we're just going to uh, use our iron to turn this under a quarter of an inch and then we'll hand stitch along this edge to cover up this seam and then we'll be ready to put our pocket on. For the pocket you're going to want to take your square of fabric and tuck each of the sides. Um, you're going to fold over twice and pin. It helps if you use uh, an iron to really get those to stay and then you're just going to place your pocket on the front of your apron a few inches from the top if you just have one you know kind of put it over to the side and you want to make sure that it's even with the side there and then you'll just pin it to your apron and then we're just going to sew around the bottom three sides and we'll be done so here we have the finished apron you can see the pocket there waistband pretty simple to do and here's the back you can see the ties hang down pretty far and it just looks great so here once again is the finished product we have our truck skirt and our truck apron all ready to go here's Haley wearing the finished product so we've got the skirt and the apron both on so and then all right, do you wanna go ahead and turn around so you can kind of see what the back looks like? There we go. It's got a nice length. You know, you don't want something that's dragging, but you want to make sure that it's long enough to cover mid-calf there. We've got a bonnet too, and we'll send out instructions separately along with patterns on how to make that. And that's it. This is what you can expect to wear for Trek this summer.